Welcome back! You are now in the third part of Lesson 3 about networks and mobile devices. On completion, you should be familiar with LAN hardware and addressing, Ethernet connections, Wi-Fi connections and wireless security, basic cellular network concepts, how to obtain cellular service, how smartphones and tablets connect to the internet, and basic telephone network concepts. Regardless of the technology used to get the internet connection to your premises, the setup inside your home is pretty standard. You use a modem to connect to the service provider's network. A broadband modem converts the incoming signal from your phone line, cable line, fiber optic line, or satellite dish into a digital signal that can be sent to a computer or to a broadband router. The modem is the place where the private LAN connects to the public one. The modem is a connection point which has two sides of faces. If your broadband modem provides only a single Ethernet port and does not support wireless connections, and you want to share your internet connection among multiple systems in your LAN, then you must add a broadband router to your network, as shown on the illustration. A wired connection to a LAN is called an Ethernet connection because it's used as a networking cable called an Ethernet cable. Using a wired connection provides the fastest and most secure connection possible within the LAN. An Ethernet connection can transmit data at one of three standard speeds. Gigabit Ethernet moves data at 1 Gbps, Fast Ethernet moves data at 100 Mbps, and 10 Base T Ethernet moves data at 10 Mbps. Except for the older 10 Mbps Ethernet standard, Ethernet networks are faster than most wireless networks. And they are the more stable because you do not have to worry about signal interference and more secure because the signals are not sent through the air where they can be intercepted. In order to make an Ethernet connection between your computer and your home, school, or company wired LAN, your computer must include a network interface card, or NIC. An NIC sends and receives data back and forth between your computer and the network and it includes its own Ethernet port. Other than the network interface card, you will also need a cable. Ethernet cables can reliably transmit signals over a cable length of about 300 feet or 100 meters. Now we move on to wireless connection. Wireless networking is a form of networking wherein systems use their Wi-Fi capability to send and receive radio transmissions over the air. Most modern broadband routers include wireless capability, which means they can be used to create wireless networks. These are infrastructure mode networks. All wireless devices that join the network communicate with the router, not directly with one another. Wi-Fi stands for Wireless Fidelity. It is the consumer-friendly name we use to refer to a family of standards for wireless equipment and transmission technologies. These standards are part of the 802.11 wireless networking standard. You can see in the table the several Wi-Fi standards and each offers a different level of performance. Wireless equipment that is compatible with multiple Wi-Fi standards is often identified by multiple suffixes. For example, you might see a laptop that includes the specification 802.11b-g-n wireless. This means that the built-in Wi-Fi adapter will work with 802.11b, 802.11g, and 802.11n. As is the case with advertised broadband speeds, 
The top speeds are theoretically maximum rates. The throughput rates you experience will be lower than the maximum rates. Because wireless networks use radio waves to send and receive information, they are susceptible to eavesdropping, interception, and unauthorized access. For this reason, it is highly recommended that you secure your wireless transmissions and use secure wireless networks whenever possible. Wireless transmissions are secured using the following mechanisms. The first one is Wired Equivalent Privacy, or WEP, 64-bit. It was the first security mechanism available for wireless networks. It does not offer strong protection and today is considered obsolete. The second one is Wi-Fi Protected Areas, or WPA. This was the first phase of improved wireless security and it works with many older wireless devices. And the third one is the Wi-Fi Protected Access 2 or WPA2. WPA2 provides the most secure wireless transmissions but it requires modern wireless equipment. All new wireless networking hardware supports WPA2 and same older hardware supports it as well. Take note, you should always use the strongest level of wireless security supported by your wireless hardware. To connect your computer to a wireless LAN, go to the notification bar and find the Wi-Fi icon. Then choose the Wi-Fi name or the network name. Click connect and enter the password. Let's move on to cellular networks. Cellular networks carry voice, text, and digital data through the transmitting and receiving of radio frequency, or RF signals. At its heart, a mobile phone is a two-way radio, and it sends and receives signals as it moves through a network of transmitters and receivers. Think of all the cell towers you see as you travel to and from your work or school each day. These towers are part of the cellular network infrastructure. Cellular carriers or providers own and operate these towers and the networks they form. In almost any discussion about mobile phones, you hear G. G stands for generation. Mobile phone technology is continually evolving as more cell towers and relay stations are put into place, providing the required infrastructure to support newer standards and faster speeds. And as more sophisticated phones are developed and put into widespread use, the common network technology is 4G or LTE. But the latest network technology today is 5G that has maximum speed of 20 Gbps. If you want to use the 5G technology, your computer should also support it. As for your cellular devices, you will need a mobile data. Having a tablet with cell service allows you to use the tablet for internet-related tasks anywhere if you don't have a Wi-Fi signal. And most cell tablets have LTE, 4G, or 5G capabilities, which makes them ideal for streaming movies and music. Anytime you download an app, look at your email, surf the internet, or check up on friends on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you are using mobile data. Mobile data can be very expensive even though it is the same data that you can access on Wi-Fi for no charge. Telecommunication companies also offer hardware phones. The landline phones require voltage for ringing and dialing, and this power is delivered from the telephone network through the phone line itself. For this reason, you can use a landline phone to place a call even during a power outage. 
VOIP phones or voice internet protocol phones which use the internet are dependent upon routers and modems which all require AC power. You cannot use a VOIP phone during a power outage. Another advantage of landline service is that the service is extremely reliable and provides excellent sound quality. That's the end of our lesson. I hope you have learned something. I wish to see you again in our next lesson. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more videos. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.